Welcome back to Core Cutting today, where we break down some of the biggest stories happening in the world of core cutting, including today. T-Mobile is now the fastest growing home internet service in the United States. 5G home internet service is taking off much faster than any other ISP on the market. We'll break down all those numbers. Local TV station owners, ABC, NBC, Fox, CBS, and more, want you to pay more for TV as a cord cutter. We'll tell you why and what's happening with that. And the brand new Fire TV Stick 4K Max, the one I'm standing in front of right now, is at its lowest price ever. This was just released last month. It's having a crazy sale. Really good sale. I'll tell you all the pricing and info real soon. First though, if you want to learn more about these stories, check out the show notes down below and in the first pinned comment, I'll pull the link to each story there. Also, we have a new Facebook group. If you like saving money on things that aren't just cord cutting related, we have a new Facebook group dedicated to all things deals out there as Black Friday approaches. Consider joining our Facebook group. Link in the, in the first pin, or actually in the show. It's not in the pinned comment because of the way YouTube works, but check it out. We have a great Facebook group all about helping you save money. So check out the show notes for that. Also, if you're new here, do me a big favor. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that thumbs up. Let YouTube know you enjoy what we do here. So YouTube recommends our videos to more people. With that said, let's dive into it. Starting off with T-Mobile is now the fastest growing home internet service in the United States. In the third quarter of 2023, all major cable TV companies added just about 5,000 internet customers. This comes as cord cutting 2.0 is really taking a hard bite into traditional cable TV. Cord cutting 2.0 is this idea that now that I've saved money on TV, I also want to save money in home internet and break completely free from my old cable company. And now increasingly there's new options, T-Mobile, AT&T, Verizon, and more are offering 5G home internet. There's Starlink, Amazon's launching a service, increasing number of fiber internet companies out there, and more are all competing against what was often maybe a one or two um, options you may have had just five years ago, can now be eight or more options now today, depending on where you live. But uh, T-Mobile added alone 557,000 subscribers in the third quarter of 2023 of 5G home internet. Um, Verizon also did very well, and at and is also starting to add 5G home internet customers. Increasingly, for most people, they're becoming very, very happy with it. Understand it may not be right for everybody. Where you live may not have good signal, but it is a great to see more options than ever before for home internet. And apparently it's working pretty well because T-Mobile's plans are now the most popular, followed by Verizon and more. So let me know, have you switched to 5G? Have you joined the core cutting 2.0 movement? Leave me a comment, let me know. All right, local ABC, NBC, Fox, and CBS affiliates want you to pay more and they're working hard on it. So this all comes as in the third quarter, many of the largest local owners of uh, TV companies or uh, TV stations, including Nexstar, saw 11% drop in total revenue. Nexstar saw ad revenues down 23%. A lot of this has to do with a very soft ad market that's really hurting them. Corner Warner Brothers Discovery, they don't expect the ad market to recover in next year. They expect it to remain soft being negative. I, I'll be honest, it, it even affects right here. Our YouTube ads, our website ads are softer than what they were. So a lot of reasons go behind that. There's more options than ever to, to advertise now. A lot of fear over the economy is having some advertisers pull back their budgets a little bit, also impacting it and more. But while, now they're turning their eyes increasingly to streaming services like YouTube TV, Hulu, and Fubo to make up for this lost revenue. We've talked about this last week, how they're asking the FCC to reclassify these services as cable TV companies. It's being done under the idea that help protect local news. Well, one of the reasons that is, is because it will allow them to get more money to, or at least demand more money than what some of the bigger deals that they're currently locked into are. We'll just see how this all plays out, but if they get their way, your TV bill is going to go up. Many of these services they want more money from are already losing money. If they have to pay more money, guess what? That's going to get passed directly on the consumer as they're already losing money. We'll see how this all plays out, but be very careful to follow this story. If it does pass, it could have a negative impact on the pricing for things like YouTube TV, Hulu Plus Live TV, and more. All right. Uh, the new 2023 Fire TV Stick 4K Max is on sale for just $39.99. This is the lowest price this has ever been at, to the best of my knowledge. It's a really great deal to get the Fire TV Stick 4K Max, or if you want something even cheaper, the Fire TV Stick 4K 2023 model is on sale for $24.99. Both are great options. If you have the extra about $15, 
I'll get the Fire TV Stick 4K, a lot more features, a lot more power, better Wi-Fi with it. But honestly, the Fire TV Stick 4K is a very good streaming player. Also, the Fire TV Cube, with all of its great features, is on sale for $109.99. A really good price for the Fire TV Cube. If you want to find these deals, check out the show notes down below and in the first pinned comment. All right, Amazon is laying off more employees, reportedly this time impacting the music division to help reduce costs. According to a report from Bloomberg, Amazon is laying off staff. So far this year, they've laid off about 27,000 staff, reportedly. Now it's being hit the Amazon Music as they reevaluate their costs. Amazon, in a statement to Bloomberg, said, like many businesses, we have closely monitored our organizational needs and prioritized what matters most to our customers and long-term health of our business. As a result, some roles have been eliminated in the Amazon Music team. Just kind of the reality, music, video, all this stuff is struggling. Soft ad market, a lot of these um, services rely on ads. A lot of the services are dealing with the fact that Music subscriptions are very competitive. Spotify, Apple Music, um, YouTube Music, Amazon Music, and Pandora are just some of the big ones that jump off the top of my head, and there's many more, like Tidal and more, are all competing for this. And while it's a very um, popular market, a lot of people like these subscriptions, it's a very competitive market because so many people are on it trying to keep the price very low. And now it seems like Amazon's making some cuts to help address that. We'll keep a close eye on this, but what question of the day for everybody? What music service do you subscribe to? I'll be honest, we do use Amazon Music. We love how it integrates very well into our echoes. Leave me a comment. Let me know what do you subscribe to out there. All right, Tubi is looking to work with um, and expand their uh, original content. To do this, they've partnered with the Blacklist, which is going to help um, underserved minority um, writers from a wide range of different um, backgrounds, get their original scripts created and turned into Tubi Originals. If you are a writer from an un what they call an underserved um, demographic there, you can apply to Tubi to get them to turn your original script into a Tubi movie, original series, and more. If you are interested in participating in this, submitting a script to them, Check out our story down below. We have a link to the website to do it. We have the deadlines you need to be aware of. There are some timelines to submit and more with this and how to do it. So check that out. But Tubi's looking to get more original content from more perspectives, more voices out there. Check out the show notes down below for more details. All right, we've talked for a while about Disney looking to sell part of ESPN or find partners to invest in ESPN as they get ready to launch a streaming service. Disney CEO has confirmed that Disney is in talk with tech companies about the possibility of them partnering on a new streaming service that will offer live feeds of ESPN, ESPN2, and more. Unlike ESPN+, Plus, which does not give you live feeds of the main networks, this one would. Well, Disney's Bob Iger has confirmed they are in talks, which confirms earlier reports that suggest Apple and Verizon are the two main companies here. Um, ESPN has repeatedly said they're looking for partners that can help them launch this and grow it. Verizon could help them grow it very well. They have a huge customer base that so they could bundle that into maybe some of their wireless plans. AT&T has a, uh, at t excuse me, Apple TV has a huge background of uh, technology experience in developing apps and more. Plus, they got the Apple TV service. You could see this being bundled into as an add-on. We'll have to wait and see what happens there. But ESPN is reportedly targeting 2025, which will be here before you know it. A year and a couple months, maybe. Um, we'll see a new streaming service from ESPN that will allow you to get ESPN without cable, without something like YouTube TV. All right, next story up. Sinclair has continued to make cuts to its smaller news departments. Over the course of the year, they've been shutting down some news uh, at local smaller stations, often in markets where they have multiple um, stations out there and just simulcasting one news feed across multiple stations. Well, now they're doing that again in KTUL, which is in Tulsa, Oklahoma. will be shutting down next month its local studios and now filming out of Oklahoma City. What they're going to do is partner with a bigger station out of Oklahoma City, keep some reporters on the ground in Tulsa, but no longer launch in a, a exclusive news feed just for Tulsa. While they don't say it's because of cost cuttings, you can definitely see the cost cutting savings on this by cutting back on the number of cameras, studios, you have to maintain facilities and more, and just having some remote staff on scene to film local content remotely in Tulsa. 
But keep an eye on this. Local news is continuing to see some cutbacks as ad market is soft. Like we just talked about why they want more money from streaming. All right, last story up of the day, YouTube TV is reportedly the fastest growing product ever for Google. According to some leaked documents uh, obtained by the insider, um, Google says that YouTube TV is its fastest growing streaming or service ever and has a very low turn rate. Uh, less than 10% of people who sign up for YouTube TV canceled. That's surprisingly good. So I want to know, are you, were you ever a YouTube TV customer? Did you cancel and why? Let me comment. Let me know. All right, let's dive into the question of the day. Now, if you have a question for me, leave a comment. If I don't happen to answer it in the next video, please re-ask it. Um, I get a lot of questions. I can't pick them all, but keep them coming because I can't do this segment without questions from you. So keep asking questions in the comments. Start off with something like a question for Luke. All right, starting off with uh, the question today, and this is about a particular service, but I want to talk about services in general related to this. They ask, is Stir in danger of being shut down? Stir is a free streaming service owned, I think, in part by Sinclair. Don't quote me on that, but it's one of those companies. They lost a lot of channels and just are a shell of what they used to be. So let's talk about all these services, all the free smaller services and more. Will some of them shut down? Almost guaranteed. There are more services than the market can bear. The question now is which ones will be successful and which ones won't. Uh, will Stir shut down? I don't know. Will some free ad support services shut down in the future? Almost guaranteed. We are definitely seeing a time in the market where subscribers are consolidating behind a few of the bigger ones, which may leave some smaller ones like Stir or other companies out there to struggle. Well, it's very low cost to run it, there still is cost. And if the ad revenue is not covering that cost, well, then you have a problem. We'll have to keep a very close eye on this, but I do suspect in the next five years, not just free services, but some paid smaller services will shut down. We've already seen some consolidation where smaller services merge into bigger ones. Showtime merged into Paramount Plus, for example. Will that become more common? I do think so. Is it possible that something behind me here that you're looking at may not be here in five years? Very much so. Question is, which services are most likely to make it and which ones won't? Leave me a comment. Let me know what you think. Well, until then, I hope you all have a fantastic day. I'll be back tomorrow with another video. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button, hit that thumbs up, and leave me a question. Take care, everybody.